expect your photometric determination of salicylate. In this experiment, you will gain experience in the use of visible spectrophotometers, more pipettes, and volumetric flasks. You will perform dilution calculations, prepare dilute solutions, and construct a calibration curve, which you will use to determine the concentration of salicylate in an unknown sample. Acetosalicylic acid, or ASA, metabolizes two of salicylates. If you were a CSI agent and found an empty bottle of aspirin beside a dead body, how would you go about determining if ASA was the cause? When ASA is ingested, it metabolizes to salicylate, which can be detected in the blood. To prepare your stock solution, you will need 250 milliliters of exactly approximately 5 millimolar sodium salicylate, and we'll need to calculate how much sodium salicylate is needed. First, you will need to convert volume into moles by multiplying it by concentration. You will need 0.00125 moles. Then you will convert moles into grams by multiplying by its molar mass. You will need 0.2 grams of sodium salicylate. From your stock solution, you will prepare five standard solutions using a one milliliter more pipette. These pipettes are different in that they can dispense different amounts of liquid depending on the amount you wish. You will use your stock solution and pipette various amounts of that stock solution into five test tubes. The values you will need for each tube are written on this slide. Next, you will prepare a test tube containing a blank and a test tube containing your salicylate solution. In your sixth test tube, pipette one milliliter of deionized water, your blank, and your seventh test tube will be a one milliliter aliquot of your just your unknown salicylate sample. Next, you will dispense five milliliters of color reagent iron three nitrate hydrochloric acid to each of the seven test tubes. This chart depicts the different reagents you will have in each test tube. Next, you will be measuring the absorbances of each test tube. Absorbance is directly proportional to the amount of salicylate present. This is known as Beer's Law. A, absorbance, is directly proportional to C, where I0 is the incident beam and IT is the transmittance beam or the energy that has been transmitted through the sample. To measure the absorbance of your standards, you will need to use a visible spectrophotometer, the Genesis 20. First, you will need to set the instrument to 540 nanometers using the interface on the left of the instrument. You then blank the instrument with your deionized water and coloring agent. Now you can measure the absorbances of the calibration standards. Note, you do not need to adjust anything on the interface of the instrument. You simply take out the blank and put in each standard. You will then measure the absorption of your unknown sample. And then you will repeat steps two to four. There is an additional video available on how to use the instrument. However, your instructor will demonstrate this in the lab. Then you will graph your data into a calibration curve. To do this, graph absorbance A versus concentrate to determine the unknown concentration of your salicylate solution. The graph should look as follows. You should note that there are a few things wrong with this graph. Be sure to review the How to Graph in Excel video to make sure you have everything that you need in the graph. With your data, you will be able to find the concentration of your sample based on its absorbance. Here is a summary of what goes into each test tube. Make sure you write this down in your data book so you can refer to it during the lab. Good luck and have fun on the spectrophotometric determination of salicylate experiment.